When we were developing the project, we felt the need to plug into the latest historical thinking. What are the, what are the top historians on the Cold War? What were they saying? How did they view the Cold War? How were they interpreting the new evidence that was coming in from what had been the Soviet Union, from East Europe, from China? We then met with the National Security Archive in Washington, who were using the Freedom of Information Act to get information uh, out of the American government. Here at the archive, we file probably 1,000 to 1,500 freedom of information requests every year. We track those through all the agencies, like Central Intelligence Agency, State Department, Defense Department. We file lawsuits when the government stonewalls. And once we get the documents released, then we index them and publish them on the web, on CD-ROM, and books, and on microfiche. To most freedom of information requesters, they'll get this, and they'll go away. And the reason the National Security Archive exists is so we don't go away. We persist. We file an appeal. We threaten a lawsuit. And ultimately, we'll get most of this document released. In fact, we'll probably get all of it released. The National Security Archive suggests to us that they brief us. They provide us a background for each episode that we're making. Because as a program maker, when you join a team like this, you have to become an expert in something in, in a matter of weeks. So they would prepare for us uh, a set of briefing documents for each episode. These would contain copies of uh, articles, extracts from books. They would contain original documents, uh, papers that maybe weren't easily available, that hadn't been published. They would contain a chronology. Uh, and with these briefing books, and believe me, there were two, three, sometimes four of these great documents, uh, the size of a telephone directory, um, that we have for each program. This, for example, is the briefing paper, the biography of Mikhail Gorbachev that was given to Ronald Reagan in preparation for Reagan's first meeting with Gorbachev. And he talked about Gorbachev's charismatic leadership and why he's different from all the other leaders. And it's a secret document that ordinarily wouldn't have been seen for 30 or 40 more years. Here's some of the Russian documents preparing Gorbachev for his first meeting with Reagan and then reporting on the summit that they had. And what you get from this is you get what each side thought the other was going for. And you can see that in the documents. And then Jeremy and his team would use those documents to go back and interrogate Gorbachev's aides and Reagan's aides. But you, you need the socioeconomic dynamic. Right, that's what's yeah. missing. Yeah. Particularly at the beginning of this, to, 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 to show people door. why Hunt was that, was that the guy was supposed to be assassinated. Killed in time for the Bay of Pigs. The, Bay of Pigs. And the script for Backyard, um, which is a show we've just been looking at to do some comments on. We sent them the briefing book for that probably seven months ago. In September, they sent us the rough script and a rough cut of the interviews. We sit down and look at the tape with the script. We say, oh, that fact's wrong. Or, mm, that came from that source, and that's not the best source. I'd use this source. Part of the problem here is that she's a survivor, a survivor of that almost sort of massacre, massacre, but this is not footage from that massacre. This is in the city. This is in the city. Once upon a time, there lived two neighbors. One of them bought a shotgun. Uh-huh, thought the other. All right, I'll buy myself a bigger gun. What could this mean, thought the first neighbor. I'll buy myself something bigger.